Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Let's take a brief review of our maxillary premolars. Start with, we'll go on our maxillary first premolar, identifying the two, two basic characteristics. One is we have two cusps. And the second is we have a significant mesial concavity or depression in the tooth. Identifying our surfaces, we've got our mesial from our concavity and our buckle from our largest cusp. We can review the outline, somewhat hexagonal, with a, a ridge coming down the buckle surface here, our buckle ridge, and the tooth being wide through our buckle third, where we have very sharp line angles and very sharp point angles, right where we had our widest part. The tooth somewhat tapers and narrows as it comes to the lingual. We have one lingual line angle, which is significantly rounder than the rest of the line angles, and that is our distal lingual line angle. In our outline form, we've got a groove, which crosses the mesial surface and sometimes comes right down the outline form, our mesial marginal groove. If we look to the new terms that are in the internal aspects of our tooth on the occlusal table, we'll get it oriented here. We've got several new terms, and we'll just briefly go through our new terms. From our buccal cusp, we have our buccal triangular ridge coming into the central sulcus area, our central sulcus being the valley-like depression between the two cusps. We have our lingual cusp and our lingual triangular ridge. We've got six grooves in the occlusal. Our central groove, which traverses the entire area of our occlusal and ends in a pit in each end. We have a mesial pit and a distal pit. And in our mesial pit, we have the four grooves, our central groove, our mesial marginal groove, which we discussed, our mesial buccal groove, and our mesial lingual groove. In our distal pit, we have three grooves coming into it, our central groove, of course, the longest and most prominent groove in the tooth, our distal buccal groove and a distal lingual groove. We've got our cusp bridges on this tooth, our buccal cusp bridge divided into a mesial buccal and a distal buccal area if we wanted to divide them down, and our lingual cusp bridges, mesial lingual and a distal lingual, and our marginal ridges, which outline our occlusal table on this tooth. We're picking up a lot of new terminology in this particular tooth here. In our mesial surface, we've got this mesial concavity, which technically is just on the occlusal, and our inner inner radicular root groove, which is technically the portion that comes down on the root, but it all joins together and is generally a proximal depression or proximal concavity and oftentimes called a mesial concavity. Our height of contour being in the middle portion of the tooth on the lingual, but being on the buccal, being in the cervical portion on the buccal. Central groove over the center of the root and our cusps equally proportioned in quarters here. Buckley, we're very similar to our maxillary cuspid. On the lingual, we've got a very strong characteristic, and that is that our lingual cusp is not only smaller, but it's mesially oriented. It swings towards the mesial. Might point out some of the variations on these teeth. One is basically size. If we have first premolars, which these two are. We can have a single rooted, a small rooted tooth, or we can have a, a two rooted tooth, very broad roots, in which we pick up a couple new terms. A bifurcation, which is the area where the two roots join, and a root trunk between the cervical line and the bifurcation area. Pardon me, a root trunk between the cervical line and the bifurcation area. Then, of course, this divides it into a buccal root and a lingual root. On our second 
premolars, generally one rooted, but we can have a large variation in our root uh, size as well as our crown size. So there's a, quite a, a variation that exists there. Let's compare the two teeth here. There we get oriented. And just by looking at these two, you should start to identify several characteristics which are prominently different. I think the most obvious one is our central groove. We've just got a longer central groove on our first and a shorter one on the second. Another very prominent uh, aspect to this is our outline form. We're more oval, rounder, or oval on our uh, uh, second premolar, and our first premolar has these sharp buccal line angles which is very prominently characteristic. Of course, we have this mesial concavity, which is, again, a, a dead giveaway on these teeth because our second premolar does not have the concavity, but uh, it's not showing in this view. Our second premolar has a larger lingual cusp. First premolar is smaller, although they're both towards the mesial. And then we've got this buccal cusp ridge on the first, which is straight and tapering towards the central groove and the mesial aspect, said to be oriented mesial lingually, or tangent to the central cusp, or the central groove. And on our second, this is generally kind of an oval uh, area, or evenly arced on our buccal cusp ridge here. It doesn't show that real prominent difference. You've got the difference in the mesial marginal ridge, which is uh, frequently very characteristic. We got this on the wrong side here, so this is the mesial marginal groove right here, coming across our mesial marginal ridge. I think you can see the differences in overall outline form and central grooves, uh, which are almost in themselves a giveaway, even if we didn't have that mesial concavity, which again is uh, uh, enough to tell the difference just in itself. We've got one other characteristic which uh, is a little bit different. And that is, you'll find in studying many of these teeth that you've got a root apex that looks somewhat like this. And you may wonder what is going on. And this is basically a root apex which is uh, not completed in its formation. The tooth was removed before the tooth had finished forming. This is the last part of the tooth to grow, probably removed for orthodontic purposes. One other thing I might point out in relation to these pulp canals, and this is something that you're going to have to keep quite in mind here, and that is they can vary rather widely between first and second. And I had a very personal experience in this area where I developed a pulpal infection and went to my dentist when I was younger, and uh, he removed a portion of the pulp and did a root canal filling, and uh, it continued to ache rather severely. And several weeks later, I got back from college and went to him again, and he went back in and opened it up and found the other canal and also remove the pulp from that canal, in which I finally got some relief. So it can cause quite a lot of aggravation and irritation if you don't know the variations that can exist internally in the pulpal morphology and, and are aware of looking for these differences in treating these teeth. All right, let's look at a variety of these maxillary first premolars, which we have at the top of your screen, the mandibular, or, or the maxillary seconds at the bottom here and see if we can get an idea of the differences between these two just at a glance. One thing I should say is although we have a variation in size on these teeth, generally speaking we're talking about nine millimeters buccal lingual dimension on the average and this is generally the same within the same mouth. So if we've got nine millimeters buccal lingual dimension in the first, we would expect nine millimeters buccal lingual dimension in the second. And generally speaking we're talking about seven millimeters mesial distal on the average, although as you can see they vary somewhat, but we ought to get approximate ideas here. About two millimeters wider buccalingually than we are mesially distally with his teeth. This will change as we go to other teeth. Now let's just look at a group of these and, and uh, see if we can't get the, uh, at a glance the differences that uh, exist between the first and second, how you can spot these kind of at a glance. We've got this buccal cusp ridge, which is very important, curving on the seconds and being rather straight and flat on the first. The length of the central groove, very important. We've got our one angle, which is much more rounded than the others, distal lingual angle. On our first, we've got our groove coming across the mesial. 
And as you kind of look at these, and we'll slide down by a few of them, we've got all the first at the top of your screen here, and the seconds uh, down at the bottom. You can see the differences in the central grooves, and you should be able to see the differences in our buckle cusp bridges, our marginal grooves, and also the difference of the sharpness of our line angles. Our seconds becoming much more rounded overall than these sharp buckle line angles we have on our first. Another thing should point out, and that is generally the widest section of this tooth occurs through this buckle area, right up in the area of our buckle cusp. And the whole tooth has a tendency to narrow as it goes to the lingual. This occurs generally most noticeably in the first, but also in the second. Our widest area is not in the center of the tooth, but a little bit buccally oriented to the center. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.